It is a really long way from Madison, Wisconsin to rural Malawi in distance, let alone culturally. But when I signed up for the Peace Corps, that's exactly what I did. I flew off to Malawi, I had my three months of training, and I landed at my site. And it was this beautiful village in the middle of nowhere. And you could see the sunrise and the sunset from the ridge. And I woke up to the sounds of chickens every morning and women pounding corn. And my job in Peace Corps was a teacher. I was a biology teacher and I lived at this school. And I was just starting to get to know my community and get to know all the students there. And in training, they really, really ingrain in you that you have to culturally integrate, you have to culturally integrate, you have to culturally integrate in order to succeed. And so I was, um, I was really trying to take it slow and get to know my community and all my students. And I was walking across my campus one day and anyone out there who's ever been a teacher knows that there's always that one student. And for me, it was this one form four senior boy. He was a full foot taller than me. He was the goalie on the soccer team. He was very popular and his name was Gift. And Gift turns out is a pretty common name in Malai, but he was the first Gift that I met there. So I was trying to figure out if Gift was gonna be sort of a help or a hindrance to me uh, in my classroom. And I'm walking across the campus one day and I see this huge red cloud of dust coming up towards me. And Gift is running up to me and he screeches to a halt with all this dust. And when the dust settles, he says, Madam, Madam, we're going to have a variety show. Will you come? And I said, of course I'll come. When is it? And he said, it's this Saturday at five o'clock. And I said, great, I'll be there. And he said, will you perform? And I said, oh no, it's your turn. I perform every day in class. But I knew there was definitely nothing else happening on a Saturday night in Malomo. So I agreed to be there and he runs off in this cloud of dust. And so after he left, I started to think, I'm not really sure if this is the right thing. Should I go? Malai was quite authoritarian in the classroom. I didn't know if other teachers would be there. Um, but I was pretty excited to see what my students had going on. So Saturday rolls around and five o'clock comes and I show up to this huge hall we had on our campus. And I begin the African art form of waiting and waiting and waiting and no one's there and they're sort of piling into the room and maybe two hours after five o'clock, things sort of get rolling. There's this one light bulb illuminating the whole hall. So they drag me to the front of the audience. So I'm sitting in the front row with like 400 students packed in behind me and they had the most incredible performances. There was acrobatics, there was singing, they did skits. It was better than anything I've seen on Broadway. Um, but I was kind of confused because Gift, who's the star of the school, this charismatic leader, hadn't done anything yet. And so I was sort of waiting for him to do something on the stage. And he comes up to me in the front row and he crouches down. And he says, Madam, I'm going to do Guliwamkulu and you will be with me. And then he sort of backs away. And I learned in training that Guliwamkulu was this Chichewa catchphrase for sort of any mockery or traditional dance. It could have really been anything. And I'm thinking, oh no, is he going to pull me on stage? What's going to happen? Am I even supposed to be here? So I'm sort of anxiously waiting for this performance. So he gets up on stage alone and he starts to do impersonations of the teachers at my school. He's like, this is Mr. Pacelli with math, and here's the hypotenuse of the triangle. And this is Mr. Ngondia with geography, and here's the Arctic Circle. And he goes through all 11 male teachers and gets to me. And he's like, and then we have our madam. And he points to me and he says it in this way that's like, this is all in good fun, I hope this is okay. And he starts to do the most hilarious, spot on impersonation of me in the classroom that I've ever seen. I'm just dying laughing, the whole school is laughing, I can't stop, I'm crying laughing, it's embarrassing. I finally pull myself together. The students are all asking him questions, he's answering with my answers. I finally asked him, but madam, why aren't you married? Which was a question I got all the time. So I finally pull it together and he's just so happy I've enjoyed it. And it, we just killed it on the Malomo variety circuit that year, that was our school. and. I was the teacher and he was the student and he spoke to Chewa and I mean I spoke to Chewa and he spoke English and I realized in that moment he gave me the greatest gift of acceptance and humor and appreciation and it was then I knew that I had truly arrived.